Absolutely delighted now to be joined by John Murray, who, as you all know, is the president of the Nurses Group here at uh, EBNT. John, welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me today. Thanks very much for taking the time. It's a lovely day here in Lisbon. It is. I'm sure it could be a little brighter outside, but it's, it's been drizzling for the past couple of days that I've been here. So this is the 34th uh, yep. Nurses Day. So first of all, how's it gone? So far, so good. Uh, we've been open now for a few hours, uh, officially. Uh, we had uh, the Patient and Family Day yesterday, which I'm sure you guys uh, sure. are very aware of. Um, so the, the, the place has been open for a solid 24 hours now with uh, good throughput. Um, this morning we've had more than 200 nurses into our first morning uh, session for the Standalone Nurses Day. And we're hoping that that continues and we get far more nurses this afternoon. Last year, by the end of the day, we had more than 250 people in the room. And looking at it so far, I think we're probably going to achieve or even uh, better that this afternoon. So what are some of the things you've been doing? So in uh, conference for this year, um, as, as you know, we spoke last year, we usually have a theme. Right. And this year's theme, we're looking at uh, basic, intermediate and advanced nursing care. And we've tried to develop the program so that our sessions um, work our way through that. So this morning sessions were very much about basic nursing care, right. how to look after your patient, uh, how to look after their nutritional needs, and a little bit about what kind of uh, conditioning therapies people have. Because this can be very confusing for nurses right. that you see the same patient with the same disease, but they have a completely different kind of chemotherapy. And why has the doctor chosen that chemotherapy for that patient? What are the underlying principles? So that was a really interesting uh, talk this morning from Anna Sereda that, that gave us some really good historical backgrounds for why chemotherapy is given and why radiotherapy might not be given in certain clinical situations. Moving forward then, we had sessions for the more uh, intermediate nurse, so somebody who's been qualified for a little bit longer, right. and asking them a slightly different question and giving them more information. Um, and this afternoon sessions are for the advanced nurse, so we're thinking of things like graft versus host disease, right. and what a complicated process this is. Um, and trying to educate our nurses really from basic level to far more advanced level and taking them through this journey, uh, not just today, Right. But we're doing that for the rest of the week. So each of our sessions, we're hoping, uh, will uh, be pitched at a variety of nursing levels. Because as you know, people that come to this conference, we have very new right. uh, qualified nurses, all the way up to people who have been qualified for 20 years or more. And we still need to teach uh, both of these groups of nurses something new. Okay. So now, the uh, nurses group is a really important part, isn't it, of uh, EBMT. So what's the strategy for moving forward with that group? The, the nurses group in the last 12 months has moved forward quite significantly since we, we last spoke. Um, we have developed uh, a nurses textbook. So again, this is in, uh, always hinges upon education. Right. And really, our, our guiding principle is to educate as many people uh, in as many varieties and situations as we possibly can. So we came up with an idea several years ago. Alexander Babich, as the previous president, uh, came up with a beautiful idea of developing a textbook that was very specifically aimed at nurses, and it was written by nurses. We also managed to secure funding so that this, uh, once it was being produced, would be free. Right. And I think that's a really important thing. Uh, nurses across Europe um, are not particularly rich and having access to resources can often be quite difficult. Uh, so if we are able to offer them a resource that in our opinion is excellent and offers them good information and education and we offer them for free, we're on a win. Um, so this has been in development and it was launched on Thursday of this week, I'm proud to, to announce and we're announcing this at each one of the sessions that is freely downloadable from Springer website and within 48 hours we had 4,700 downloads. Um, I don't know what today's figures are yet, I haven't managed to have a look, but within 48 hours having almost 5,000 people downloading this textbook is, is beyond our wildest dreams within that first so two days. So that's fantastic, so what's next? Well, what we want to do is develop that further. So alongside the textbook, we would like to develop a handbook. And the handbook, we want to be uh, even more accessible. So we're going to develop an app. So people, unfortunately, carry their phones around with them, even at work. Um, so we want to use technology. We don't want to be frightened of technology. We want to use it and adapt it to our needs. So if we can take uh, some information that's concise and brief, 
and turn that into an application that can be attached to a phone, the nurse, when she or he is in the room caring for their patient, has a question and they think, I would normally ask a colleague, but everybody's very busy, I know, I'll have a look at the EBMT app about transplant and they can briefly look, see their question, answer their question and be able to carry on caring for the patient in the room um, without breaking that continuity of care that they've uh, generated. So that's certainly one of our next tasks. We have many others, but that is, I think, is our focus okay. over the next few months. Okay. Well, marvellous. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. It's been a great day and yeah. I hope it continues. Thank so you. do I. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>